our approach is a direct gene therapy, direct to the, to the brain. Um, we inject the product into the right matter, into six sites, three per hemisphere, and then the vector, which is an AV coding for the missing enzyme, uh, will uh, um, uh, will diffuse along white fiber tracks and then enter into brain cells, and the cells will therefore be able to produce uh, the, uh, the enzyme that can be secreted and recaptured by other cells. Therefore, you don't need to transduce all the brain cells with this phenomenon of cross-correction, which is typical of uh, lysosomal storage disease. You, you, you can uh, uh, transduce some cells that will be able to produce the enzyme for the other cells. And compared to other approaches, such as uh, enzyme uh, replacement therapy, the first uh, interest is the one, one, one shot treatment. We, we inject the product once compared to uh, current infusion or several infusion for enzyme therapy. And also, as we target the brain directly, we have not the problem of the blood brain barrier, which can limit the the therapeutics entrance into the brain uh, when you inject the system into intravenous, for example. And, and one, one last thing is the, the dose. When you inject into the brain, you limit the dose that you inject compared to uh, yes, see, an intravenous injection, for example, when you need to achieve very high dose to reach the brain and uh, with potential um, yeah, effect or adverse event linked to this very high dose of vector injected. So here we specifically target the brain, which is the main uh, organ that is involved in the disease and cause the main symptoms. So in this uh, presentation, I focus on the first biomarker data we have on the current clinical trial. Some will uh, maybe develop uh, the, the, the status of this clinical trial, but uh, we analyzed the samples of the first nine patients in, in, in enrolled and treated in this study, for which we have sample at baseline after six months and one year after treatment. And we analyze uh, the serum and CSF for uh, the primary accumulation of heparin sulfate and for the secondary accumulation of uh, gangliosides. And we observe a statistical a significant uh, reduction of heparin sulfate into the CSF, around 30%. And this uh, reduction was specific to the, the brain because we do not observe a similar reduction uh, into the serum. Therefore, what we observe in the CSF is linked to a reduction into the brain because there is some evidence that the heparin sulfate in the CSF could come from the brain but also from the periphery. Around half of the heparin sulfate accumulation could come from the brain and the other half from the systemic uh, accumulation. So here we show by the specificity in the CSF and not in serum that our treatment that target the brain uh, lead to a reduction of heparin sulfate that comes from the brain. So yeah, just to, to, to add to that, I mean, it's all the more compelling when you, when you are um, giving a, a gene therapy directly into the brain, you're looking at the CSF, when you're comparing to measures in CSF, if you've given it intravenously, the compelling nature of that data from our administration of approach is, 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 is um, very high. It, the, the, we're, we're currently, the trial is on clinical hold, and that was um, or is related to MRI findings. So in the, so, so white matter changes um, from, that we see on the MRI. Um, so these find, I think it's very important to note that uh, these MRI findings um, are, are not currently linked to any um, clinical symptoms that, that, that we're seeing. So, so we're really just, just looking at, looking at, at, at that. Um, that said, um, our recruitment is complete into the clinical trial because the aim was to um, treat 20 patients in the clinical trial, of which uh, we have treated 19. And because we had a main cohort and a younger cohort, the main cohort was already completed. So we're following obviously those all children in the clinical trial very closely, um, despite COVID. So, so we're managing to do um, on-site visits. We're managing, when we can't do on-site visits, we're doing um, local or remote visits. So if we have families that are living in one country and would need, be needing to travel, we're managing to organize everything locally. So, so we have got um, um, very good follow-up data. And we're continuing to, 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 to follow those children as per protocol 
and um, it, it doesn't actually affect um, the timelines.